So I wanted to make this video as a guide to your first convention, your first Comic-Con, whether it's a celebration, a New York Comic-Con, a San Diego Comic-Con, a fan expo, ICCC, whatever convention you might be going to or thinking about going to, I wanted to put this together because I've been going to cons now since about 2015-ish, so almost 10 years of doing this, and I've learned a lot along the way. So some of the conventions that I've been to have been Star Wars Celebrations. I did in Orlando, Chicago, London, Anaheim, doing Japan next year. I've been to Megacon plenty of times. I've been to New York Comic Con once. I've been to ICC Con, Ocala Comic Con, Tampa Bay Comic Con, plenty of conventions. And a lot of things that you do for them planning wise is pretty much the same for the most part. There's five main things you should focus on if you're planning your first convention. Number one, and some people might not agree with this or might, you know, be like, why would you do that first? Number one, is booking your hotel now this applies if the convention is not in your city because if it's in your city you can just drive to it right but for most people it's not always like that a lot of people are going to travel whether they're driving a few hours hours flying and things like that but the first thing you should do if you're planning a con you want to go to is book a hotel first even before tickets for the con go on sale and here's why. Now, when I say book a hotel, I mean use like a travel website like Expedia or whatever you use. But I use Expedia because it's free cancellation and you don't pay till you check in. So there's literally no risk. So the minute you know the exact dates for that con, like, you know, whenever it gets announced or if you just find out about it, go to Expedia or whatever travel website you use book a hotel that's free cancellation and that you pay when you check in that way you have that secured now hotels is one of the biggest things i see people stress and worry about especially now with san diego comic-con going on this week and I, I saw so many people struggling to get hotels uh hotels price gouging with crazy prices and a lot of this can be avoided if you book your hotel first the reason i say this is so crucial is maybe two years ago when they announced the next dates for san diego comic-con i wanted to go i'd never been i didn't end up going but i booked a hotel the second the dates were announced right and when i booked my hotel it was like five nights six nights it was like 1500 or something like that and i was like all right cool i mean it is what it is it's right it's, it wasn't too far from the convention center in san diego so i booked that knowing that I wanted to go to that con next year because I had the dates. Now, fast forward a few months, tickets go on sale for San Diego Comic-Con. I get tickets, they sell out. Then all of a sudden, people went crazy looking for hotels. Now, that's why I say people might think I'm crazy saying hotel first because typically you want to secure your con ticket and then your hotel. No. For San Diego specifically, the same hotel that I booked months and months before tickets went on sale and sold out went from being $1,500 for that same date range to $5,000, which is ridiculous. So that's another reason why it's crucial to book your hotel first, because if you book it closer to the con and then the hotels know that the convention is coming into town and they see the influx of traffic, they raise those prices. So I always recommend booking your hotel first through a website that has free cancellation, pay when you check in, because then that gives you the freedom to cancel it, to switch it, to do this, to do that. But number one, hotel. Now next, number two, tickets to the convention. Now, some conventions are easier than others to get tickets, but usually they're gonna announce when and what time those tickets go on sale. So be sure for whatever convention you're trying to go to, you're following their social medias, whether it's on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, because typically on those platforms, they'll announce the date tickets go on sale and the time. And once you find that out, make sure you're available that day. Make sure you have the funds to the side to buy that ticket. And then on that day, you're going to want to get that ticket. Now, depending on the convention, I know New York Comic Con sells out really quick. San Diego does as well celebration typically does as well so depending on their format i have this video here that i did for 
Star Wars Celebration specific, but if any other convention has a similar checkout process, what I did in this video will apply to that too. So definitely take a look at that. I'll link it down below. Now, the next one, step number three, is gonna be flights. Now, again, if you're living in that city or you're driving distance, you don't gotta worry about this, you're good to go. But for a lot of people that do have to travel, start looking at the flights right away and have an idea of like, you know, what days you wanna go, what airport you wanna leave out of, what airport you wanna arrive in, and what I do is for a few weeks or a few months, I kind of check that flight every week, every couple of days, ho however often you want to, just to see how the price fluctuates up and down. That way it gives you an idea of the range of that. And then maybe, you know, one day, three weeks in or a month in or two months in, you might see it drop drastically. That's when I recommend pulling the trigger. So like we're going to ICC Con in October and I've been watching the the flights and they were all like three, 350 for a while. And I'm like, all right, cool. That's the range. One day I checked, it dropped to like 220. And I was like, that's a big dip. I pulled the trigger right away on that flight. So that's something to keep in mind. You don't have to buy the flight right away, but I would just take a look, see which flight you want and just keep checking that one. Another tip too, is as you're checking the flights that you do want, Take a look at the seats to see which ones are still available and which ones sell out. Because if you're kind of waiting to the last minute and the flight is almost booked and there's nothing but middle row seats left, you might not want that flight. So keep that in mind. That's another trick to let you know if you need to pull the trigger or not on that flight is when all the good seats start going and there's nothing but middle seats left. I'm not a fan of middle seats, so keep that in mind when you guys are tracking your flights. And I use like Expedia to look at flights the Skyscanner app or skyscanner.com. That's a really, really good tool as well. So those are a couple of things that I use when I'm planning my flights. Now, the fourth one is exclusives, photo ops, and autographs. And the question I get all the time on my live streams for Japan Celebration, like Q&A, is how much money should I save? How much money should I bring to this convention? And with that, you don't have to spend a lot of money or bring a lot of money to have a good time at these cons. When I first started going to conventions, I barely, you know, bought a lot. I never did photos. I never did autos. So literally you could go to a convention with the minimum amount of money to buy food and drinks and maybe a couple things, but you don't need like a huge budget. Depending on the convention and what they have there can also help you with your budget. So for example, if we're talking exclusives, Certain conventions have exclusives that you can only get there. New York Comic Con does it a lot. San Diego Comic Con does it a lot. Celebration does it a lot. So usually before the show, they'll kind of let you know what's an exclusive and you could kind of game plan from there. Well, hey, I want this statue from Sideshow. I want this Funko from the Funko booth. I want this Hasbro Black Series exclusive from Hasbro. So you could kind of see what's only available there and budget that. But I always recommend when you're at the show, don't buy things just to buy things, especially if you could get them back home. Like if you see a Black Series helmet that you could get anywhere from Hasbro site, from Amazon, why buy it there and lug it home when you can always get it? The things that I look for at conventions are exclusives that you can only get there because that's the only way to get them, right? So that's what I focus on. Everything else, I kind of like, I could just order that from Hasbro Pulse, I could go to Target and get that. I could get that from Walmart. I don't need to lug it around. Unless it's like a crazy steal. Like if it's like a $150 Black Series helmet for like 40 bucks. Like stuff like that's a no-brainer. But if it's around the same price you could order from off Amazon, why would you not just do that and just when you get home, it's there? Two-day prime. Let's go. Now, photos and autos is a different story. That's really your preference on if you want that picture or that autograph. I know for me... When I first got into it, it wasn't until 2022 Anaheim celebration and I did photo ops and I loved it. And now more recently, I'm getting into the autographs. So the only thing I could recommend with that is when you do plan photos and autos, try to spread them out and don't put them all on one day because sometimes, you know, the actors might be late. There might be delays. There might be this, there might be that. So you don't want to have five autos and photos in one day. And if one person is late, that throws off your whole day and you might miss some. So definitely spread those out the best you can. 
And typically what I'll do is like, depending on the show, I'll try to focus on the people that are more rare and that don't come out as often. You know, some shows you might always see like Hayden's been going to a lot, but then there might be another actor that's there that is a little bit, you know, like, wow, he rarely ever comes out. Let me get his for sure. Cause I know I could get Hayden at this show cause he's doing this one and he's doing this one. So keep that in mind too, when you're planning it, the photos and autos, definitely try to grab the ones that are harder to get. And the ones that aren't so hard to get, you'll be able to find them eventually at another show. The last thing I got is your con bag. Now, I'll drop the link for this down in the description. I did a full video of what I'm going to have in my con bag for Japan Celebration with links in the description. I'll put the link to the video and all the Amazon links in the description as well. There's a bunch of things that you know I always recommend, but some of the mandatory things I would say to have in your con bag when you do go first thing is going to be a water bottle some sort of water bottle it doesn't matter i use an owala boba fett water bottle right but you could literally use any type of water bottle you could even bring an empty bottle as long as you have something to refill all these conventions have the water fountains typically with like the water bottle refill thing so definitely bring a bottle with you because I learned that from Chicago Celebration. I, I didn't bring a water bottle and I'm spending like 15, 20, $25 a day on drinks, on sodas, on water, on beer. And literally, if you have a refillable water bottle, that saves you so much more money you could use for other things at the show. So that's one of the big things. You want to stay hydrated. Another thing I always recommend bringing in your bag is snacks. Because you, you'd be surprised how much time you spend in lines and like you're going to get hungry you're going to be running from this panel to this photo op to this booth for this exclusive you might not have that much time to eat and then when you do want to eat you might go to where the food is and the lines there might be crazy so i always recommend having something to snack on whatever it whatever whatever you choose have some sort of food in your bag you need something the third thing I, I really recommend is some sort of power bank. There's so many kinds. There's the actual like power bank, power bank. There's the ones that you could like attach to your phone, things like that. So any sort of power bank, because if you're going to be on your phone, taking pictures, taking videos, you're going to need that because power goes out quick, especially after a long day at the con. So those are some of the things I recommend. There's a bunch more in the video. Definitely go check it out. And it might be things that you're not even thinking about that, oh, I could use that, I could I could do this. So there'll be links in the description for everything. And that way you could just get an idea of what I use and you could just use any version of it that you see. But it's just kind of just showing you things that you might not be thinking about. Like another thing is a poster tube. A lot of times at these shows, you get a lot of free stuff, free posters, free this and free that. So a poster tube is something that people might not think of to bring to a convention or like I have the Itoya art portfolios for my photo ops. That way, after I get my photo ops, I just slide it into the portfolio, put it in my backpack. It's protected. It's safe. So little things like that. Um, just take a look in there and you might find something that, oh, I didn't think about that. Maybe I could use that. So those are the five basics. Any questions you guys might have, drop them in the comments below on a convention that you're going to and, and any like suggestions or recommendations. But for the most part, all of these will apply to most conventions, whether you're planning for your hotel, your tickets for the show, your flights, the exclusives, photos, and autos, and then making sure your con bag is ready to go. Now, you guys let me know if I missed anything in this how-to guide, and check out this video next.